Welcome to worship at Cincinnati Friends Meeting. I'm Jim Newby, the Minister and Public Friend at the meeting. Our worship this morning will consist of a brief message by me, followed by a time of meditative silence, for what Quakers call open worship. The silence will be broken by either Dick Patterson or Deb Miller, <laughs> who are sharing the facing bench with me this morning. <laughs> They are both members of ministry and council. Uh, I guess it's Deb. Deb will be sharing about joys and concerns. For those of you in the meeting house, if you're led to speak out of the silence, please stand and the microphone will be brought to you. Uh, please be sure and introduce yourself to our Zoom participants. And I would invite the Zoom participants uh, to do the same. The scripture passage uh, this morning uh, is a familiar one from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all of the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was the child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swallowed cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. The Christmas season, as you well know, is one of mystery. It's one of wonder. And it's certainly a time for memories. I know that I repeat some of these memories each year, but then that is what keeps the memories alive. Some of these memories are sad, such as the Christmas where we opened my father's gifts that were always purchased early. Uh, he had died unexpectedly just two weeks before. And then there are those joyful memories, one of which took place right here in this meeting room, uh, when our daughter uh, was just a little girl and she was chosen as uh, Mary uh, for the first day school Christmas pageant. Uh, she made a stunning entrance here into the meeting room. Uh, if you can imagine, this uh, was one long aisle leading up to uh, what was an elevated stage in the front of the meeting room. Uh, she walked down that long aisle wearing, wearing her appropriate Middle Eastern Mary garb. Uh, with her little friend Joseph walking beside her. And then bringing up the rear uh, of this procession came the baby doll Jesus. Our Lisa Mary was holding his toes and dragging him behind her <laughs> with, with his little doll head bumping along the floor and then banging up the one elevated stair where the manger was located. It was quite a sudden. <laughs> Lisa will be here on Christmas Eve. She's planning on it, so uh, she can become reacquainted with all of you. At Christmas, the memories become intensified, and we do a lot of laughing together, as well as crying together. It's an emotional time as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, the Word becoming flesh, and dwelling among us. The God who stands out of time enters time. The God who is infinite becomes finite. And the God who has been called all powerful becomes all vulnerable. While I was at Plymouth Church in Des Moines, Iowa, we would be treated each year by one of my colleagues at the staff Christmas party singing a song written by John McCutcheon. The song was titled Christmas in the Trenches. 
It's a song that was written about the Christmas truce of 1914. On Christmas Eve of that year, in the midst of a bloody battlefield in France, uh, there appeared some unexpected gifts. The gift of song, the gift of tenderness, and the gift of peace on earth uh, breaking forth within the darkness of chaos. In the words of that song by McCutcheon, it was Christmas in the trenches where the frost so bitter hung. The frozen fields of France were still no Christmas song was sung. Our families back in England were toasting us that day, their brave and glorious lads so far away. I was lying with my messmates on the cold and rocky ground when across the lines of battle came a most peculiar sound. Says I, now listen up, me boys, each soldier strained to hear. It's one young German voice sang out so clear. He's singing bloody well, you know, my partner says to me. Soon one by one, each German voice joined in harmony. The cannon rested silent, the gas cloud and rolled no more. As Christmas brought us respite from the war. Then one by one, on either side, walked into no man's land. With neither gun nor bayonet, we met their hand to hand. We traded chocolates, cigarettes, and photographs from home. These sons and fathers far away from families of their own. <clears throat> Young Sanders played his squeeze box and they had a violin. This curious and unlikely band of men. Soon daylight stole upon us and France was France once more. With sad farewells, we each began to settle back to war. It was Christmas in the trenches where the frost so bitter hung. The frozen fields of France were armed, were warmed as songs of peace were sung. For the walls they kept between us to exact the work of war had been crumbled and were gone forevermore. It's a true story. On this Christmas first day, as during the Christmas truce of 1914, the ways of the world are once again turned upside down. In a world consumed by never ending violence and destruction, where children are gunned down in schools and drive by shootings are an everyday occurrence. Soft cries of Mary's child are more deafening than any gunfire. On this meaningful and beautiful day, we're reminded that power is not displayed by the weapons of violence, but by the vulnerability of a newborn baby. No longer does the world bow to Caesar Augustus or Herod of Judea or Kaiser Wilhelm or any of the politicians, kings, and generals that normally command the world's attention. But to the love that emanates from a small manger in the city of Bethlehem. You see, that child that comes at Christmas is truth and grace. He comes to a world overcome with darkness to be the light that will forever shine. He comes to your life and to mine as a priceless gift to turn the world upside down, to take away the hard edges, making us more tender and more loving. Here's this wonderful story from the pen of Barbara Brown Taylor. And with this, I close. 
The angels and all the company of heaven agreed it was an outrageous plan. This idea of God is to become a baby, a real human baby, weak and vulnerable, at the mercy of everything that afflicts human life. The courts of heaven advised against it. It was too risky. Surely there were other ways that God could show God's love to God's people. How about stories and history, rituals, symbols, laws, and prophets? Already been tried, God said. The angels continued to argue with themselves about the risk-taking display of God's power. But God had turned and left. The angels watched as God left. And then a strange thing happened. Below them, they could see a scrubby brown pasture speckled with sheep. And in the middle of the sheep were shepherds sitting around a campfire sharing stories. It was hard to say who was most startled, the shepherds or the angels. But as the shepherds looked up at them, the angels pushed their senior member forward. Looking down at the shepherds, the angels said in a gentle voice, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news a great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And way up the hill from the direction of town came the sound of a newborn baby's cry. 